So for our next test, here's an example of one of the super easy questions. And my gosh, if you can't distribute by now, you're in Algebra 2. Yeah, you need to fix that. This one, you need to know how to do that kind. Is it the add? Is it the multiply? Don't say it. Hopefully you know. I see a couple headphones out. Those need to go away. And just I always give a reminder before I take away cell phones or write up people. Last chance to put your cell phones away at this time. Okay, this one, I was shocked at how many kids did not know how to do that. You've got to do that. That's one of the easy ones for the test. You've got to know how to multiply that. And then you got to know how to graph stuff like this. Okay, that's just a reminder. That's like, here's the 11. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Here's the 11, and you circle it, and it's negative 11. And then, do I fill it in or not? It says or equal to, so I do fill it in. If it says or equal to, you fill it in. And then what's this sign? A ton of kids had trouble with this last hour. Is that less than or is that greater than? That is less than. And if you're having trouble telling which one's which, I'm going to put them side by side. One of those looks like an L. That's the less than sign. Okay? That one looks like an L. That is the less than sign. Okay, so that is a less than sign. So less than goes this way because the smaller numbers are always over there. Less than is to the left. Okay, I'm gonna just do each of these for you to make sure you get this. That's negative two and most common mistake is to say negative eight. What is it actually? Positive eight. Okay, this one was X to the, on this kind you add them, X to the seven. This one, Pay attention because, again, half the class last hour didn't know what to do. Foil is a great way to do it. You don't have to do it this way, but it's the best way. First, n squared. Outside is these two. Why are they called the outside? Because if they're on the outside of this whole big thing, the things that are on the outside are on the way left and the way right. They're on the outside. Plus 4n minus 3n. And then the lasts are the last one in each parenthesis. So negative 3 and positive 4 makes negative 12. Could you have done that? I'll have you do one in a second. But that's, that's something you have to be able to do to get a C. This graphing kind is one. If I had said x is greater than or equal to 5, you'd just put a 5 on a number line. You'd circle it. Would I fill it in? Yes, because it says or equal to. And then bigger than, that's a greater than. How do I know? Because it doesn't look like an L. The ones that look like an L are a less than. So this is a greater than, so then it goes this way. All right. Do you agree that those are fairly easy math problems? Okay, they are fairly easy. If you don't have them yet, it's okay because it's not till next week. Maybe some of you just need to like work on those easy ones because we're going to get some hard ones next. So imagine a world where you got six out of eight of the easy ones right, and you have a 75% on your test so far. You honestly, there's some kids that just won't do the rest of the test because they'll be like, that's good enough, and I'm not, I'm not good enough at this to do, get any more right. If you just skip the whole rest of the test and you still got six out of eight on the easy ones, you got a 75%. Now, what about the harder questions? There are four harder questions. No, five, sorry. There's five harder questions. Five harder questions. And then there's an extra credit question. We only talk about that for now. But for right now, there's five harder questions. You don't have to do any more of those right to get a 75%. You already got a 75%. But for each of the five hard problems that you can get right, and most of you can get one right, one of the five hard ones, well, then you've moved yourself up 5%. So let's say that you get two out of the five hard ones right. Then you're going to get plus 5% and another plus 5% because you got two of them right. So your 75 just went up to an 85. See what I'm saying? So I want you to think of this as if you can do the easy ones in here, you're going to have a locked in C. Almost everybody could do that. And therefore, you're going to have a C pretty easy. The question is whether you can get maybe three of those hard questions right and add 15% to your score. 
That'd bring you to a 90. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. All right. So here's an example of a hard question. Like hard enough to be considered one of those top five hard questions. You're right. Write this one down. Negative two n to the negative third x squared over 8 n to the second x, just an x. So would you be one of the kids that could get the extra 5% for getting that one right? That one's a hard one. It's too hard for the C level questions, you know? Some things I told you. Remington, do you remember me saying something about the negative exponents aren't happy? Yeah, you have to move them down. Move them down. Or move them up if they're on the bottom. But in this case, move them to the other side. He doesn't like it on the top, so let's move them to the bottom. Now he's not at the top anymore. Life's a little simpler. Next. That 2 and that 8, can they be factored? Yep. Especially the 8. I mean, a 2 is just a 2 and a 1. But how about the 8? Would you agree that I can replace an 8 with a 2 times 4? I mean, that's equal, right? And why is that smart? Because now what happens? you notice the 2 here and the 2 there, and those will cancel. Some other kid's probably going to be like, well, I just put a 4 on the bottom. Cool, so did I. I just showed my work. I just showed that there's a 4 on the bottom because it was an 8, and I changed it into a 2 times 4. Next, it's getting really messy. At some point in the problem, you have to rewrite it. I've come to that moment. So I still have a negative on the top, and there's an x squared on the top. And on the bottom, I've got a 4. I got this n to the third and this n squared. Couldn't I put them together and say n to the what? Yeah. N to the fifth. Yes, I can put them together. And then there's still an x on the bottom, so x. You can put the x first, you can put the n first, it doesn't matter. Okay, next, this x squared, can I just move him to the bottom? No, 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 that's if he was a negative exponent. So then what do you do on that kind? Yes. Oh, I thought that was a hand. It was just somebody... Scratching their head. Okay, so this x squared, watch me make it into x times x. Because why is that smart? Because you're always looking to cancel stuff. Do you see something canceling now? I do. I see that and that, as it wouldn't matter which of the x's, one of the x's cancels one of the other x's on the bottom. They're gone. You can make stuff cancel like that. And it's getting messy again, so I'm going to rewrite it. The more you rewrite it, the better I like it. Like a little more showing of work is awesome. And sometimes you realize that's it. There's nothing else I can do. I mean, is there any x's that can go together with this one? No. So then that's, that's it. Is there any n's that can kind of go together with that or move them up? Or nope. That 4 is kind of lonely. There's nothing it can do. So that's it. It's done. That's the answer. Now, I know not many people would have gotten there today, but you'll practice it a few more times, and by next week, some of you would have got that. How many of you would have got that without me? You would have got this today. All right, that's not many, but that's okay. We'll get smarter between now and Tuesday. Yes? So, why, why did you factor the 8? Why did you just add there, the 2 from the top to the bottom? 
All right, so here's, here's what we had. We had a two on the top and an eight on the bottom. Okay, so do you agree that that's like a fraction of two eighths? Now, you can just be good at reducing and go, oh, that's one fourth. You could do that and go, that's one fourth. Do you get that's a way we could have done it too? Okay, because two eighths is one fourth. Now, maybe you like that way better, but I personally like this way where I go eight is two times four. I mean, that's, that's nice and basic math. Eight is two times four. And then hopefully you'll start noticing, oh yeah, I can cancel where there's one on the top and one on the bottom. That's why I did it that way. So either you gotta know that two eighths is one fourth, or you gotta do it the way I just showed you and then make the twos cancel. The reason I like the twos canceling thing is because there's variables that are going to cancel too. Like if you end up with that, a to the third over a to the second, cancel, cancel. There's an a left on top. So you got to get used to that canceling thing. All right, let's do one more like that. Uh, negative 3x to the third, y to the negative third, over 6 x, y, squared. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Not right this second. Stay with me. If you make a pass and have it ready, just don't hit approve on it. I can probably let you go in a bit. All right, so this, six, can be factored. Can you do just one step at a time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's unhappy exponents. Move them so they're happy. Jason, tell me one more thing I could do besides factoring that six into three times two. What else could I do? Um, you can factor the x. OK, I think I know what you mean. Let me make sure. There, I just changed my 6 into 3 times 2, so I can cancel these. All right, now, what do you? What I think you mean by the x's is to, like, make it into xxx on the top. I agree. You can definitely do that. So I'm going to rewrite because it's getting a little messy. Negative xxx for the x to the third. And, Asen, just one more thing. Where is that y to the negative third going to go? So I'm just going to go like that. And now I gotta like copy what's left on the bottom. There's a two here. There's an x. There's a y squared. And I'm gonna try to do this all at once. I just moved my y to the third down there. And I'm gonna put all my y's together and make it y to the fifth. Now, if you can't do it from here, man, this class could be really hard for you. See if you can see what cancels. Simplify it down a little bit and write what you think the answer is. Don't say it, but I want you to share after the finished, get your final answer, and then don't forget to cancel something. And then compare with the kid next to you and see if you got the same answer as that. Okay, that X and that X cancel. It doesn't matter which one, this, as long as there's one on the top and one on the bottom, cancel. And you got to know how to write this. If you can't write that as x squared, I'm a little scared. And then there's a 2, and then there's a y to the fifth. And there you go. From here, it was easy. From the top, it was a hard problem. There's no doubt. But from here to here, that should be easy. Negative x squared over 2y to the fifth. And if you're wondering, like, why do you stop? Well, because there's, there's only one number. Down here, what is it supposed to do? Like, you can't do anything with it. There's, the y's are all done, and they're all together on the bottom, so there's nothing else you could do with those. And the x squareds, there's no other x's at all to, like, simplify with, so they're done. All right. So that's the easy ones that you're supposed to be able to do, except for the equation solving from yesterday. Well, let's see if you're good on that. 2x minus 8 equals 10. 
That's a two-step equation. I think we should be running at at least 75% of people get this right, right away. There are no cell phones out, which is fantastic. If I'm just reminding you that if I did see any, I'd have to send a letter. I've had to send two so far. So far, only two. All of my, all of my classes. Adding eight. 2x equals 18, divide 2x equals 9. Raise your hand if you had x equals 9. Cool. Now, sometimes it freaks people out when the numbers are on the other side. Like that. Well, then you just need to be reminded you want to get the x alone. So you're trying to get rid of the 4 and the 3. Those are the things to get rid of, the four and the three. So Remington, what's step number one here? Plus three on each side. Plus three, plus three, and then I got 23 equals four X. And then you're trying to get the X alone. A lot of people are so used to like everything being on the left, they're like, divide by 23. No, don't divide by 23. What do you do? Divide by four. And again, Think reflexively, a lot of you think you have to make that into a mixed number. No, you don't. 23 fourths is just fine. 23 fourths is good. Yes, that's, it's true that that would be 5 and 3 fourths, but we don't need you to do that at this level. How many of you are feeling like you will get the equations right? Okay, good. Then, you have just finished the easy part of the test. And let's say that you even got two wrong. You still would have six out of eight, and you'd all have a 75% on Tuesday. The pro ones we've done so far were mostly easy, except that one back here. This kind, th those are pretty hard. So that's probably one of the hard ones. So anyway, there's five hard questions, and I'm about to teach you one of them. And let's see if you can handle it. It's about writing an inequality and solving it. Inequality, what is that? Well, let's say I said 2x is less than or equal to 10. Do you get that's a lot like an equation? It's just got a little like little less than in it. Okay, so that is an inequality, but to be able to write one, I will be telling you a story, a big word problem, and then you have to write those numbers. All right, so I'm gonna just say, Let's say we had this and I wanted to solve it. Do you get if this was an equation, we'd just divide by two? And that's all you do. You just divide by two. That cancels that. X is less than or equal to what's 10 divided by two? Five. And that's it. Look, it's just like an equation. Except understand what it means. That means the answer can be five or that sort of looks like an L, doesn't it? So it... The answers can be less than 5. So like 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All of those are less than 5. So is negative 1. That's less than 5. So there's a lot of answers. So then you have to be able to graph them, which we already did. Here's 5. Less than's this way. Do I fill it in or not? Yes, yes because it says or equal to. It can be 5, so we fill it in. There you go. So it's not that hard to solve inequalities. It's hard to write them. So here's, my, here's a story. And again, we have so many days before the test. Maybe you won't get it today, but it'll just like kick in tomorrow. This kid has $1,000. And he's going to spend some of it because his dad won't pay for... Uh, he wants to get HBO Max because he wants to watch Game of Thrones, which was a good series. But his parents are like, I'm not paying for that. It's too expensive. It's like 30 bucks a month. And he says, fine, I'll pay for it. So, okay, if you pay for it, we'll get it. So then it's 30 bucks a month. How do I write that? I got 1000 Then how do I write, I'm going to spend 30 bucks a month? Spending is minus. It takes away from your $1,000 that you have saved up. 30 bucks a month. What do I put for that? 
x or m or any letter, do you get it's 30 for each month? And I don't know how many months yet. I never said we're only going to rent it for a month. It might be like three months or six months. So we have to put an x there. But this is where the inequality part kicks in. Do you get that your bank might have a rule, a lot of people do, where you have to keep a minimum balance in your account of 500 bucks? Like, if you go below 500 bucks, they start charging you money for having your bank account, which is kind of annoying, but it's true. They, banks make tons of money off those charges. So if you have to stay, your account has to stay greater or equal to 500 that's how you would finish. So now that you look back on it, it's, it's just a story that starts with 1,000. You're subtracting off or spending 30 a month, but you have to stay greater or equal to 500 bucks. Think you could write something like that? Maybe not. Maybe that's going to be too hard a week from now or a little less than a week from now. And then I guess you won't get the 5% for that one. You don't have to. Most of you will probably be at a C, and then you'll add on three of the five problems. Maybe you'll figure this one out by then. But if you only added on three of the hard problems, and you add an 80 or add a 75 and you add on three, you'd be at a 90%, and that's pretty good. But I think you can get this. You just have to try it a few times. So I'm going to tell you another story, and let's see if you can write the equation for it. This time, the kid starts with 1000 bucks, But this time, they're not spending money every month. This time, they're earning it because they have a job. How many of you guys have a job? Raise your hand if you have a job. All right, that's like three-fourths of you. So if you've got a job, I don't know what number to pick. I'm going to pick 800 a month. Let's say you're making 800 a month. Maybe that's a little high. Probably depends on how big of a job you have, but do you get so far in your equation you should have 1,000? And then you're adding to it 800 a month. And your dream was to have 10 grand. You'd be okay with more than that, probably, right? See how that's an inequality? It doesn't have to be exactly equal to 10 grand because you'd be okay with more than 10 grand, right? Do you get I just told you a story and it's actually an equation? Who thinks they can do it? It's not that scary. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. Maybe you weren't raising your hand, but I'm calling you on you anyway. Um, a thousand. A thousand. Plus 800x. 800x. 10,000. Very good. That's it. First time we did it, I think you guys thought this was going to be super hard. It's not that bad. You can do this. How many of you would have had that one right? All right, cool. Now, the bad news is you do have to also solve it, and, but it's like just like an equation, and you want the x alone, and then you go, I guess I got to get rid of a 1,000, and I guess I got to get rid of an 800, and you do PEMDAS but backwards, and so you go, is there any add or subtract I could do? Yup, there's a add subtract, it's subtract 1,000. Eight hundred x greater than or equal to thousand or ten thousand minus a thousand is nine thousand. And now I just got to get rid of the eight hundred. Remington, what do you say about that one? Yes. Now this is a moment where most of you are not going to be able to do this without a calculator, which is totally fine. You'll have one on the test, right? So somebody take a sec. Grab your calculator. It's some decimal. 11.25. This is 11.25. Can anybody else verify that? All right, good. 11.25. Now let's think back to what this was about. Was this about like cutting down trees? Um, no. It was about earning money at work until you have 10 grand. So what is the 11.25? 
months. It'll take you 11.25 months, and then you'll have 10 grand in your account. Businesses do this kind of thing all the time. They're like, we need to save up money because we have to like build a factory. Except this will be in like billions. And we need to get ourselves, maybe it's not billions, maybe it's in millions. And uh, to build our factory, uh, we need to get greater than or equal to 10 million dollars to build our factory. That's if it's like a local, small place. 10 million isn't that big of a building, honestly. When Tesla builds a building to build their factories, they cost about $10 billion grand total to like completely outfit it with all the robots and stuff it needs to build cars, 10 billion. So anyway, companies do this kind of thing all the time. They're like, how long will it be before we can afford to build a factory? So a lot of times they'll borrow money to build the factory instead, instead of saving it. But. All right, there's always gotta be one more little thing, and there is. I'm gonna give you a nice easy one, except it's got a negative in it. And some of you are gonna remember this, because this was in algebra. I guarantee you, you had this in algebra. Somebody's gonna remember. All right. Do you know whether we should add or subtract 8 right now? What's your gut? Don't be scared. Do you think we should add or subtract 8? Subtract. subtract 8 is correct. How do you know for sure? That negative, is it on the 2 or the 8? The negative is on the 2, see? The eight was positive. All right, so that's one thing that gets a lot of people. There we got past that one. Negative two X is less than or equal to 10 minus eight is two. And here's the last little thing. Divide by negative two. And I just got it wrong. Does anybody know? what I did wrong. You have to flip the inequality. You are correct. That's the thing that you learned a million years ago. Instead of less than, we have to switch to greater than. Why? Because we divided by a negative. And would you agree that a, that a negative kind of means opposite of? Okay, so a negative means opposite of, so then we want the opposite sign. So if you ever divide by a negative, or multiply by a negative, that isn't usually what we do. Usually we're dividing by a negative, but either multiply or divide by a negative makes the sign switch. So the common screw-ups here are this. People forget what this is called. And then they'll be asked to do a, you want to have less than this much money. And you'll be like, is that the less than or is that the greater than? Remember, that the way to say that one, in case they tell you, you're supposed to use less than, and you're like, I don't know which one it is. Does this kind of look like an L? Yes, then it's a less than. Okay? And the greater than is the other way. All right. And then when you don't forget at the end, if you divide by a negative, oh, so many kids are going to have this sign not switched. They'll forget to switch the sign. That'll happen on the test all the time. Forget to switch the sign. It's wrong. You won't get the 5% for that one. All right. So you now have learned everything that you have to know for, and honestly, you've learned a couple of the hard ones. You know, this kind. That kind of thing. And the writing inequalities. These kind, if you so far can do all the all the easy ones except, you know, make a couple dumb mistakes, and then you add on two of the hard ones, you would have had a 75 plus 5 plus 5. You'd be at an 85 so far. I think a lot of you could be there right now. And we aren't testing till Tuesday. So when we learn a few more hard things, don't be like, oh, I can't. 
Because like, you can handle it because the last two things you taught are really hard. If so, then I guess you'd be stuck back at the 75. It's not the end of the world. Easy stuff on the test is so easy. When I teach you the hard stuff, don't freak out. All right. Let's do today's worksheet. Everybody find it, open it, and I am a reasonable person. There is too many hard problems in that one, so we are going to skip a lot of them. Get ready to cross off a bunch of them. Because I don't want to assign you such big assignments that you're like, oh man, I don't want to spend an hour doing math, so I'm not doing it. I'd rather give you a small assignment and you go, this isn't going to be bad. I'll be like 10 minutes, maybe 15. I'll do it. Right, so to do that, sometimes I have to cut it down because there's just too many. And I will on purpose cut out ones that are like repetitive, not unnecessary. So would you please cross off problems one, three, five, seven, and nine. One, three, five, seven, and nine. And no, we're not skipping like 11 because that's a really, really important one and there's only two like that. All right, so let's start with number two. Grant, could you read me number two? Okay, that'd be great. Oh, like this. Yeah. Got it. Awesome, thank you very much. Okay, we always start on the top of the fraction and do everything we can. Is there something we can do in there? Sure there is. Uh, turn X, turn that into X to the eighth. X to the eighth, good. Part done. I would not rewrite the whole problem just because you did one part. I would write the X to the eighth here, and then I'd do a little bit more before I rewrote it. Can't the x to the 5 and the x to the 8 go together? And on that kind, do you make it x to the 40? No, x to the what? 13th. x to the 13th, very good. Now it feels like time to rewrite it because I've, I've done so much. So I'm going to go 3 times x to the 13 over 6x to the 10th. If you just naturally go, oh, Three sixths, that's one half. Cool, do that. But I personally go three times two for the six, and the threes cancel. It's still one half. But to me, this way makes more sense. You just factor it into something times something, and then one of them cancels. Now here, a whole bunch of them are gonna cancel. I don't, I'm too lazy to write out x 13 times, and on the bottom, X would have to be written out 10 times. So I'm going to be smart about it and go, well, I know there'd be a whole bunch of them would cancel. And then I just got to ask myself, how many of them are left after they cancel? Three X's on the top. On the top. Because look, wouldn't I have written out 13 X's up there and 10 X's down there? So the X's that are left will be on top because there's more of them on top. That makes sense. Now, you can just say 13 minus 10. 13 minus 10 is 3. X to the 3. But the problem with that is if you ever get a negative, if you ever get like a negative number, then you got to remember to like put it on the bottom and make it happy. So I don't really like the subtracting exponents idea. I'd rather just write this. And if you have to, just write them all the way out. And this is 13 of them. I don't think you're going to write them all the way out because it's such a pain. And then you'd go, well, 10 of them cancel, and 10 of them cancel, and oh, there's three left on the top. See, x to the third. All right, final answer. Well, there was everything was gone on the top except x to the third. How about the bottom? Is there anything left down there? Yes, there is. What is it? And there's your answer. That was a tough one, I know. 
That's hard enough that it would have been in the five hard problems at the end kind of thing. Maybe you'll be able to pull it off. Maybe by then, if you practice it enough. Somebody in here is probably going to get them all right and get the precious perfect 100%. Okay, that was problem two. You obviously have problem four and six and eight and all that, but I want to help you with the really hard one at the end. It's a word problem. So everybody look at number 11, please. We're going to do one, two, skip a few and read number 11. Let me read it. Frank opened up his own hot dog stand in downtown Minneapolis three months ago. In that time, Frank has saved up 6000 from his profit selling hot dogs. Sounds to me like he's starting with 6000 I would write that. He's got 6000 that he saved up. Now, they made you a long story about it, so it might have confused you, but that in the end, it's 6000 bucks. All right, now what happens? We're going to add to it or we're going to subtract from it? So let's see. Frank wants to start setting aside $40 a day for hot dog research, as in he wants to like make cooler hot dogs or whatever. So he wants to set aside, that sounds like minus to me. $40 a day, I can put D for day. You might have put X, you might have put N for the number we're solving for. And at the end, we want to have one of those inequalities. So you got to figure out if it means greater than or less than, and then there's a number. I think you should take it from here yourself. You figure out if it's greater than or less than. The less than looks like the L. And you figure out what number goes here. Now, I will be posting the key. But if all you do is just go right to look at the key, you will get super weak. You got to try it yourself first. All right. And that's all I have for the video for today.